All right, now for starters, I filmed a video about a year ago that was called Tesla Model Y, Is It Any Good in the Snow? And that was a pretty cool video. It was so cold when I filmed that video. And I gave a lot of different technical information on just my experience driving in the snow with that particular vehicle. Now, here we are in Colorado. I've lived in Colorado my entire life. For most of my life, living at elevation. So above about 82, 8,300 feet. And so you see a lot of different kinds of snow when you grow up in Colorado. You've got the slushy stuff, the dry stuff. You've got the stuff that just packs down real hard. You've got a lot of different snow conditions. And so in this particular video, I'm not gonna be driving the car around in the snow to show you how good it is. That's a really, to me personally, somebody that's actually experienced driving in the snow. That's a silly example. What I will be talking to you about today is my personal experience driving this particular vehicle for about the past three ish months in winter conditions and then the model y performance all of last winter in 2021 to 2022 and then this winter as well so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today let's go ahead and hop into it okay so let's actually move into the vehicle so we can have a little bit more of an intimate conversation now for those of you that are so bummed out i don't need my seatbelt yet for those of you that are so bummed that i'm not going to be driving the car in this review here's a video of me driving in and here's a bunch of elk is that nice or what? Go ahead and take a look at that. All right, now the first thing I wanna to touch on, and this is regardless of if you're driving in a Y or an X, is the problem of the regen braking. Now, last year when I filmed my video on the Model Y, is it any good in the snow? Go ahead and check that video out up top if you're just inter interested in the Model Y. But the problem now is it used to be that you could turn off the regen braking on all of the Teslas. Now they've had an update to where you cannot turn off the regen braking. The regen braking is just on all the time. I don't know why they did that. We can talk about that in a different video, but as of right this second, the regen braking is on all the time and you have no option to go ahead and turn it off. So that is kind of a problem. If this is your first, like if you just bought a Tesla and it's winter time, it may be a little bit hard to adjust driving in the snow because as soon as you let off of the accelerator pedal, it just, it starts to essentially hit the brakes. It's not really hitting the brakes, but you don't, everybody knows you don't really want to just like hit your brakes hard in the snow or in slick conditions because you're going to slide. So the key with driving in a Tesla with the regen braking is just lightly letting off of the pedal. And that can be a little bit of an adjustment for people to learn as they first get their Tesla. Moving on to traction. Um, traction really specifically comes down to the tires that you're running. Traction isn't really related at all to uh, the vehicle. Traction is really, are you gonna be running an all season, an all terrain, a mud terrain, a winter tire? Realistically speaking, if you have the option to just run two sets of tires, winter tires are always gonna be your best friend. I recommend Personally, I, I let's just say I don't recommend it, but me personally, I always run all seasons and somebody's gonna be like, oh, you, you just can't trust this guy. He lives in Colorado and he drives all, yeah, I drive all seasons because I know how to drive in the snow. So a big portion of uh, somebody driving in the snow is how skilled are you at driving in the snow? And so we're not gonna talk about that here in this video, but yes, I can drive all seasons in the snow in Colorado at elevation all year and be just fine. I also have, keep in mind, a fully built out Toyota Tacoma, and that Tacoma um, is just really ready to go for kind of anything. So anyway, traction, pick a good set of tires. Tires are gonna be super important. But when we talk about traction control specifically, the traction control system is very good in the Teslas, and it's because they're such a torquey vehicle. Even if you're driving on a, a road that's got a little bit of gravel, or it's got a little bit of moisture on it, or it's wet from a rain or something like that, in both my Model S Plaid and my X Plaid, it's really hard to get that car to slip to where it's like scary. Um, and I'm saying I haven't been able to make it scare me with just hitting down real hard and it's even kind of wet conditions. And they're super torquey vehicles, a thousand horsepower. So they have to be able to correct within microseconds, milliseconds, to be able to actually gain traction and put traction onto certain wheels that are actually moving properly through whatever slick environment or whatever terrain they're moving through. So the traction control system is the same on the Model Y and the Model X, and the traction control system, in my opinion, is second to none in the industry. They're just really, really fast, and if you've driven a Model S Plaid or a Model X Plaid in any sort of wet conditions or anything like that, comment down below and let everybody know how good the traction control control system is. That is a great example of it because it's really, really hard to get that car to slip. It will slip, 
but it's really hard to get that thing going sideways. So traction control, they're about the same, and that means that they're awesome. Now, when we talk about the balance of the vehicle, this is where the vehicles start to change a little bit. The Model Y has a better balance to it than the X does, and that's because the X has more weight in the rear. It's got two motors in the rear, it's got one in the front, whereas the Y is very balanced. Obviously, both cars are gonna be balanced from left to right, but the Y specifically is very balanced from front to back too, and it doesn't have a huge nose on it, so the swing weight isn't really that bad at all. Um, same thing with the X, the swing weight isn't too bad, but it is a little bit more elongated in the front. So when we're talking about the balance of the vehicles, the Y is superior in terms of its just form factor and the wheelbase itself, distributing that weight and so it doesn't want to lean or push too far when you're going downhill it's not trying to push you from the rear or when you're going uphill it's not trying to pull you from the back which is something that the x can tend to do now when we talk about the ride height of the vehicles that is something that also varies quite a bit and the ride height on the model y performance is six I think it's 6.6 .6 inches is what it is. And the ride height on the Model X Plaid is 6.6 .6 inches at just kind of its medium height. And then you raise it all the way up to very high and it's 8.1 inches. So the ground clearance is really good on the Model X. I shouldn't say it's really good compared to like a general um, SUV, like a, like a Suburban or something like that, but it is very good when you're talking about the Tesla lineup. And so where does that come into play? Well, most neighborhoods, even in just like, the suburbs in America aren't really going to get plowed and that's because people park on the sides of the street and the plow company doesn't want a bunch of um, lawsuits for knocking off mirrors and all that kind of stuff. So even in neighborhoods, when you're pulling out of your driveway, a lot of times, if you've got over 12 inches of snow, it can be a problem for when that snow uh, heats up in the day from the sun and then ices at night and you leave early in the morning, you can see significantly damage your bumper if you've got a lot of snow that's just iced up and crusted. So the ability to raise that sucker up and you've got better ground clearance really is an advantage on the X that it has over the Y. And then let's talk about the range. You are going to have some range degradation and whether you have to keep your car outside and it's plugged in or in the garage will make a big difference for you on how much range degradation you see. So I'm not going to talk too much on that, but me personally, having my vehicle stored in a garage, I can expect to see about 10 to 15% range, deg range degradation on my Model X Plaid and maybe a little bit more on my Y. I don't know why that is. I have to do more testing on it to really see what the heck's going on there with that. That's just been my experience. Um, but that aside, even if they d degrade the same range-wise, you've got the X Plaid or just the X in general. The X Plaid is 333 miles of range or like 350 if it's not the Plaid. And then the Y, you've got like 330 miles of range on the long range and like 303 miles on the uh, performance model. So the range is better and that's better in the cold weather because you obviously are going to be able to drive farther. Then finally, visibility. The ride height of the X compared to the Y is significant. It's probably about two inches when they're both, when let's just say this, when the X is sitting at medium height and the Y is sitting at uh, just <laughs> its normal height. It doesn't move around. Um, you've got a couple, maybe two inches, maybe a little bit more of just like your seated position in the car. Now, in, con in addition to that, we've got this huge piece of glass on the Model X and that actually lets in more light. So if you're familiar with optics like scopes or lenses for cameras or anything like that, having more light come in later in the day is really, really important. Same thing in a vehicle. If it's like dark and overcast out, the bigger the windshield, the more light that can come in, the easier it's going to be for you to process data to drive that vehicle a little bit more safely. So um, the visibility is better. And then when we raise the vehicle up, I think the ride height on the Model Y performance, I I measured from the ground to the top bolster of the seat on the seat of the Y, and it was like 20 five inches or something like that, 25 and a half, something like that. And then I measured the X and it was like 27 and a half inches. So it was a couple inches difference. But then when you raise up the X all the way to its 8.1 inch ground clearance height, you've got um, four inches of difference there from the Y to the X. And so there's another advantage for the X. I did want to touch on the Falcon wing doors in the Model X. That can seriously be a problem. When you get when you get more than like three, four, five inches on the Model X, if that sucker is not programmed to be a low open, you're gonna get a ton of snow dumping in on the car. So that can certainly be a problem. If you have a Model X 
in winter time, you should set that sucker to low open because then it's going to open just enough that people can get in and out of the vehicle, but it's not going to allow snow and water to just like completely dump down on the passenger, whoever's getting in and out of that particular vehicle. Just a quick note there. And then finally, both cars have heated windshield wipers. They both have heated steering wheels, heated seats. Um, the air actually in the Y is pretty wimpy, but oddly in the Model X, it is also kind of wimpy in the wintertime. It's been my experience. This is just my experience. When it's very cold, we're talking hovering around zero degrees Fahrenheit in the Model X Plaid, which is what I have, you have to turn it all the way up to high. You can't just like set it up to 80. You need to turn it up to high and crank that up. Otherwise, the air coming out is just not that hot. So you have to do that. And then it'll clear um, any sort of condensation or anything like that from inside the vehicle off of the windshield, giving you good visibility. The Y is not that great either. So I would say the X is probably a little bit more superior in that regard and clearing, um, uh, clearing, um, <laughs> condensation from your windshield. But in general, they're very much on par with each other. And the X is going to be just a little bit harder to heat up because the cabin is so much bigger. In conclusion here, both the Model Y and the Model X are very good vehicles in the snow. The Model Y is going to shine on just its basic form factor and the wheelbase that it has. It's very, very even. It's a lighter vehicle too, so it's not going to want to slide as much on like a steep incline. And so that is a win for the Y. Now, when we're talking about the X, the obvious advantage here is going to be the ground clearance. The ground clearance is huge when we're talking about the X, and I think that that's probably its biggest advantage over the Y. The traction control system, as mentioned, is the same on both vehicles. The traction it itself is going to be dictated by the tires you're running. And then other than that, they're both generally about the same. So uh, in my opinion, personally speaking, it's not too big of a difference. However, I would say I, I think I would give the edge to just for basic snow driving and driving in slick conditions. I think I'd give the edge to the Model Y, specifically my Model Y performance, just because that weight distribution is just so, so good. And then if I'm driving in real heavy snow, I'd obviously rather have the X so that I can clear uh, drifts and stuff like that. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you like this kind of content, please go ahead and give me a like, give me a sub, and we'll see you in the next one.